Hello, folks of geometry. Um, how did 301 go? I'm, I'm hoping that you got comfortable with some of the vocabulary and, and started to get an idea of why certain triangles fall into certain categories. So why one might be scalene and, and obtuse, or why one might be um, isosceles, but also a right angle. So um, I'm hoping that you spent some time kind of getting comfortable with those. So now we're going to talk about congruent triangles. And congruent triangles are, are a big piece of geometry and are a big piece of this unit. And before we get into congruent triangles and things like that, we need to talk a little bit about what makes things congruent. So um, congruent shapes are, are kind of exactly what you would think. They are the same shape and they are the same size, so they are congruent. Okay, so they're the same shape, they are the same size, and, and probably a little asterisk I would put by this is, is all measurements are equal. Okay, all measurements are equal. And and um actually let me let me put a little bit of a let me, let me add a little word in here. So let me kind of add a little word in there. So all corresponding measurements are equal. And, and I'll, I'll explain to you in a minute what I mean by that. But basically what, what I'm saying is that um, every part that matches up is going to be the same measure. Okay, so if, if we consider here, so we have triangle ABC and we have triangle H, J, K. Okay, so we, we're having these two um, triangles. So, and, and if we notice that a lot of these marks match up. Okay, so, so if I'm looking at, um, so if I look at angle B, it's got one mark. If I look at angle J, it's got one mark. So I can say, hey, angle B is congruent to angle J. And, and likewise for A and H, and, and it's very nice once color-coded and they flat out tell you, angle A is congruent to angle H. So last but not least, so angle C then has got to match up to angle K, and it's good because they have those same marks which tell you that they're going to be congruent, they're going to be the same measure. So this is kind of what I mean when I say um, each little part is going to be equal to each other. That's, this is kind of what I mean. So now, sides, sides are very similar. So if I look at AB, AB matches up, and I'm going to put the little segment there, matches up to HJ. And if I look at side BC, that's going to match up to JK. And if I, if I look at this final one, if I go AC, that is going to match up to HK. So my final congruent statement is going to be ABC congruent to HJK. Now, a quick word about my congruent statement down here. When I write my congruent statement, it's very important. This is a very tiny detail, but this is still very important. The way I write it matters. So if I write A, B, C, I need to write H, J, K. A, if A goes first, H goes first here. Because A and H correspond. They're in the same location. They're, they match up. Likewise, if B goes second, J must go second. And if C goes third, K goes third. Okay, so, so those must all match up. Those all need to match up. Okay, so just a quick word about that. So be very, very picky, okay, about the order in which you write them. So now here we've got a couple of four-sided figures. Um, so let's, let's, let's look and see what we have. So if we start with the angles, you, you have angle A here, which, which has one mark. Angle A is going to match up to angle W. So angle A is going to match up to W. So then angle B is going to match up to angle X. 
So then angle C is going to match up with Y. And angle D will match up with angle Z. And, and now as we go around for sides, I get, so now as we go around for sides, let's match this up. Okay, so if I go, so if I go BC, BC, that will match up with XY. Then if I go AB, that will match up with WX. Then if I go CD, that will match up with YZ. And, and finally, if I go AD, that matches up with WZ. So now my congruent statement, so now I, I just need to say A, B, C, D. Okay, that, that implies that it's going to be four points. That means four sides. That's got to be congruent to what? Well, what matches up to A? That's going to be W. What matches up to B? B is going to match up to X. What matches up to C? C is going to match up to Y. What matches up to D is going to be Z. So these need to match up. Those need to correspond. Okay, so you have to be very, very picky about how you order things and how things match up. So you have to kind of play the game of, okay, those two go, those two go, those two go, those two go. Okay, and I know it's a little bit tricky to follow, but you've got to, got to kind of be very, very picky about what goes where. So now if you look up above here, look at the problem. They give you a congruent statement. And, and this is helpful because what I can go, go off of just from this is I can say, okay, well, then A matches up to D. B corresponds to F. C matches up to E. Okay, I can get that just same location. Okay, I can also say the same thing about segments. So AB is going to match up to DF. BC is going to match up to FE. It's going to correspond to there. And AC is going to match up to DE. Okay, so these, these two are all going to be corresponding to each other. They're, they're going to be congruent to each other all the way around. So when, when I look down here, so figuring out um, X, well, X is located right here. Uh, that doesn't help me very much because there's a Y involved as well. So, if I, But if I look down here, F has got 8Y eight eight y minus 5. Okay, so let's look. F matches up to B. So B is 99. Okay, so I can work with that. Okay, I can work with that. So I can say, okay, 8Y minus 5 equals 99. So 8y equals 104. So a little division. Let's see, that will be 13. Okay, so, and again, it's, it's merely a, a uh, not just an algebra problem. You solved a couple hundred. Um, so now, now that I know what y is, now I look, ef. Ef, well, that ef is the same thing as fe. That matches up to bc. Okay, so that matches up to BC, which is 38.4. So 2 times 13 plus X equals 38.4. So now, just doing a little subtraction, so that becomes 12.4. And, and, and that's it. That's my answer. But I'm hoping that you see the importance of, of making sure that things match up, um, that, that of taking note of which things match up where. This 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 is a really really big piece. Okay, this this is not uh, this is not easy. So now as we as we look again, you have another congruent statement. Okay, so you must kind of you know angle R congruent to angle T. Angle S congruent to angle V. Ah, and look, angle V is congruent to angle S. 
So now look at these two. Look at these two. You have S congruent to V and V congruent to S. Well, well, wait a minute. That that can't be, or or can it be? Well, it can and it can't because if you look at the if you look at the diagram, what they're saying is that this angle S, this angle S, matches up to this angle V. And then they're saying that this angle V matches up to that angle S. Okay, so I know it's very, very confusing. So what they're saying is, is that if this S is 90, then this V is also 90. They're also saying if, if this V is 78, then this V is also 78. Okay, so now if we, if we need to figure out X, Y, well, let's take a look. Uh, X, X is located right here. X is going to be angle T. Uh, T is congruent to R, but we don't know R. That doesn't help us. But what does help us is the fact that this is a triangle. And I know that that's 90 and that's 78. So this becomes 90 minus 78. So, so that's just going to be 12. Yeah, that's just going to be 12 or 12 degrees. Okay, so, so now that, that gives us x. So now for y, y is located right here, rs. Clear out some of this. y is located right here for rs. Okay, rs, if I look up here, rs matches up to tv. So all this is saying is 2y minus 1 equals 24. Okay, I, I realize I went a little quick there, but I'm just trying to move things along a little bit. So those two are going to be congruent. They match up, a little solving, and we're done. Okay, so now this, this is kind of a, a feed off of a couple of the ideas we've spoken of before. So, and this is kind of just saying, um, all this is really saying is that if I have two sets of angles that are congruent, then, then by default, the last angle has got to be congruent. And, and that, that stems from the idea that, that all angles, that all triangles have to have a sum of 180. Okay, that's, this, this is kind of a direct, um, a direct relationship from that, kind of a direct result of that. So... Simple idea to kind of put into play. So A is 90, F is 90, so those two match up. B is that, H is that, they have the same markings. So what I'm left with is 2X equaling 80. So X would be 40. Pretty straightforward. Now, now all you're doing is matching up. Uh, number five, a little bit of a challenge. So L is 65, which makes Z 65. M is 51, which makes Y 51. Okay, so N and X are going to, angle N and angle X are going to be the same. But 4X plus 65 plus 51 is going to equal 180. Okay, so that's going to be 4X plus, let's see, 116 equals 180. So I subtract 116. 4x is going to equal 64, a little division. x will equal 16. Okay, so the angle would be 64 degrees, but x is going to be 16. Okay, and this, and this is just algebra. I mean, this, this is stuff you've seen before, stuff. If, if you take your time and go with it, you fully understand what you're doing there. Okay, so now... Off you go to the 3 2 assignment and quizzes. Make sure that you are checking your assignment before you do the quizzes. And, and we will talk to you again soon. Thank you very much.